Hi, and welcome back to Few Tutorials. I'm Mavish, and this is Level 4B Part 1, in which we will be having a look at principal component analysis in the light of face recognition. This is actually a part of Level 4B, in which the major uh, objective will be to understand how PC works to recognize a face. Now, I have kept beginners in mind who are starting to learn this topic, uh, being a beginner myself. I will try to keep things as simple as possible. So let's begin with our learning objectives. Now, the learning objectives of this tutorial, this part one, will be majorly to understand the relation of PCA to recognizing a face, in which we will cover what is principal component analysis, why and where is it used, why is a principal com what is a principal component or an eigenface, and the benefit of dimensionality to reduction which is actually a key feature of PCA, and then how results of PCA are measured. Before we dive into what is PCA, how it works, let's have a look at why and where is it used. Now, PCA was invented in 1901 by Carl Pearson, and nowadays it is mostly used as a tool in exploratory data analysis and for making predictive models, for example, in face recognition. It is the simplest of the true eigenvector-based multivariate analyses, and often its operation can be thought of as revealing the internal structure of the data in a way which best explains the variance in the data. Now, the, by variance, we could mean the major features of the data set or the directions in a data set. Now, we will have a, a detailed look on this uh, particular property. But I will also be taking both of thing, both things parallel. That is, one is PCA technique itself, and uh, its relation to recognizing a face as well. I will take both of them uh, parallel. Now, in PCA, if a multivariate data set is visualized as a set of coordinates in a high-dimensional data space with one axis per variable for example in face recognition that multivariate data set would be a set of images you see uh, a training set of uh, consisting of total m images like we have over here and each of these images is going to be of n by n dimensions so that means that there will be total of n square dimensions or n square uh, n square pixels so such a multivariate data set when it's visualized as uh, as a set of coordinates in a high-dimensional data space, then PCA can supply the user with a low-dimensional picture that is a shadow of this object when viewed from its, in some sense, most informative viewpoint. So, when PCA transforms this tra uh, training set of images, the database of images, it converts, it transforms it into a lower-dimensional picture which is something like this. Now these are just to, uh, just beforehand, I'll just tell you that these are the features. Uh, in th this data set has been split into features. This is a low dimensional picture of this data set. Now what is PCA and its relation to face recognition? I will be taking uh, PCA, principal component analysis, and face recognition together in parallel. So I'll tell you about what is PCA and I'll also relate it to face recognition so that you understand it better. Now by definition, principal component analysis is a mathematical procedure that uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a set of values of possibly correlated m variables into a set of K uncorrelated variables called the principal components. And the number of principal components is always less than or equal to the number of original variables. That is, K is less than or equal to M. Now, if it's too messy, it sounds too messy right now, don't worry, it will make sense soon. Now, the thing to note over here is that it works on orthogonal transformations, that is, it will work on square matrices with real values. And another thing to note that in relation to face recognition, P, uh, the uh, you see over here set of values of possibly correlated m variables. Now these variables are actually going to be the face images in the training set I just showed you before. And these k uncorrelated variables 
called the principal components, these are the actually the lower the, the lower dimensional picture I just showed you earlier, that is the eigenfaces. So if I uh, replace variables with images and principal components with eigenface, we get a better understandable definition of PC in relation to recognition like this. You see, it's a mathematical procedure that uses this, this, this. Uh, in short, it converts M face images, a data set of M face images, into a set of K eigenfaces where eigenface, the number of eigenfaces, is always less than the number of original face images in the training set. Once again, we have that training set consisting of M images. When PCA is applied, the transformation results in a set of eigenvectors and where K that is, total number of eigenvectors is always less than the total number of images in our training set. But this the transformation of the training set is defined in such a way that the first principal component, remember principal component is an eigenface, shows the most dominant direction or features of the data set and each succeeding component in turn shows the next most possible dominant direction or features under the constraint that it be uncorrelated to the preceding components. Now in short what it's saying is that in for example in face recognition this was our set of principal components that are that is our eigenfaces. Now what happens is that when the eigenfaces are calculated the first principal component, the first eigenface always depicts Ma, the major, uh, you see, features of the data set. You see over here, this person, this eigenface looks most like a proper face. And then we have the preceding ones, the preceding eigenfaces, that is the preceding com uh, principal components. As you can see, as you go from left to right, the principal component number is increasing. That is, these have been calculated after one another, going this way. And as you go further and further down to right till the end of the eigenfaces, the last principal components calculated, you see that there are lesser features and more noise. You see, you can't really make out what this uh, this vector is trying to say, what this principal component is trying to depict actually. So this transformation, these principal components are calculated in this manner. Now to reduce calculations needed for to find these principal components, that is the eigenfaces, the dimensionality of the original data set is reduced before they are calculated. You see, uh, it, for example, that bef if we do not reduce the dimensionality, the eigenfaces required will be n square. You could say, for example, um, uh, 50 times more than these that have, uh, this amount that we have found. But after we reduced the dimensionality of the training set, the training set of the images, the original data set, then we were able to have our calculations and we only needed to find just these few principal components, these few eigenfaces. So that's the benefit of reducing the dimensionality that it reduces your calculation efforts. PCA does that for you, by the way. Uh, your calculations reduce and the calculations also get faster because we will we'll see how they get faster. Now since principal components, that is eigenfaces, show the directions of the data and each preceding component shows less direction and more noise, just as we saw in the image before, only few first principal components, say K, told K, are selected whereas the rest of the last components are discarded. Now these K principal components can safely represent the whole original data set because they depict the major features, directions that make up the data set. Having a look once again at the image we had before, for example, this were, these were the total eigenfaces that we had calculated after reducing the dimensionality. And even from these, we could actually only select the most useful, K useful eigenfaces. How they are selected, they are selected heuristically by um, uh, artificial intelligence method and etc. However, that's not what I'm going to explain. But have a look at this. See, this is the first eigenface, the second, third, and so on, till the kf eigenface. 
Now, the uh, idea behind it is, I already mentioned that the last eigenfaces, the last principal components, to make more and more noise in, uh, in the data set. So they're not very useful. In fact, they could hinder the good results of uh, your predictive model. So the key is to discard these last noisy uh, eigenfaces or principal components and only keep the k useful eigenfaces. Select only these. And now the whole data set, the training set of M images, can be represented in terms of these eigenfaces. Oh, by the way, note that these eigenfaces have no relation to the training set I showed you before, but this is just for example sake to make the concept clear. I have used this image. Once we found our eigenfaces, our uh, required, our selected icon faces, the best set of icon faces that can represent the whole training set of images, then each variable in the original data set can be represented in the terms of these k principal components. That is, each image in the training set data in face recognition, each image uh, in the training set data or the incoming unknown image can be represented in, as a linear combination or as a weighted sum of these eigenfaces that we had found earlier. So you see these weights over here, W1, W2, and so on, to WK, and these are the uh, linear weighted sum of these eigenfaces. So in one way I could say that, okay, each image is contributing some features to the training set data. Right, so in a reversible way, I could also say that okay, uh, this image contains a little bit of this feature, a little bit of this feature, and a little bit of this, a little bit of all the k eigenvectors. So it's uh, so what I'm saying is that this face is made up of all of the eigenfaces in proportions. So I represent them uh, these proportions in a vector. This is a weight vector where I assign the weights. If I multiply this with the, uh, with the phase, I probably get the percentages, the proportions of the eigenfaces which make up this training set image. So each image, face image, whether it be training set image or the incoming unknown image, is represented in, form, in terms of the eigenfaces. Uh, and this is the crux of principal component analysis uh, in the face recognition method that we are studying. And representing a data point this way, that is representing an image this way, as a combination of k principal components, reduces the number of values from m to k needed to recognize it. Because before we said that a training set of m images, for example, the m could be 400, was now is now represented in terms of k eigenfaces, and k could be like 50. So 50 is very much less than 400. Naturally, this makes recognition process faster and also more free of error. Why free of error? Because in the previous uh, image where we saw the eigenfaces, we saw that we discarded all those noisy uh, eigenfaces. We so in short, we actually disca discarded all the noise in the data set. So now noise will have least effect on the results of recognition. And now how is actually PCA done, the mathematical method that it, it is done by eigenvalue decomposition of a data covariance matrix. And the results of PCA are actually discussed in terms of the component scores, that is, uh, a data point, for example, a training set, uh, an image, a face image, is made up of how much of which of the K principal components, that are which of, uh, how much of each K eigenfaces makes up a face image and the loadings, that is the weights. Now these are the weights, the weight vector actually that I just showed you uh, before. So that is uh, all for understanding or having an info about PCA before we know how it works. So I'll just revisit all that we have read till now in form of bullets and replace uh, principal component, the word principal component with eigenface, data point, or a variable with image, data set with the training set of images. For the sake of understanding its relation to face recognition, I'm doing this and reread what we've just read right till now. And let's see if we understand PC in relation to recognition or not. I won't be reading any more to you, you can just go through it. 
I hope it makes more sense now. This tutorial was basically just to throw light on PCA in relation to face recognition. Now in the uh, next part of level 4B we will be looking at how actually what are the steps to train the recognizer and to recognize an unknown face in PCA in faces method. Well, that's all for now. See you in the next tutorial.